Hi folks, welcome to lesson two, quantitative chemistry with Priestland Science. Uh, same lesson structure as per normal, so if you need to pause the video at any time and collect your resources, then do so. Uh, you're going to need a periodic table today, which was attached to show my homework yesterday and today. Uh, so go and get that. And you're also going to need a calculator. So get one of those now, please. Uh, let's start now with our retrieval. Uh, this is B1 cell biology, so you can pause and retrieve. These are the answers, so you can pause and revise. And this is our second lot of questions, so pause and retrieve. And the answers are here. So you can pause and revise. And finally, some questions from yesterday's lesson. So hopefully these will be relatively straightforward for you. So pause and retrieve. And you can check your answers here. So you can pause and revise. Okay, today's lesson is all about calculating the percentage element of a compound. And you're going to need a few different documents once again. There's one like this on Show My Homework, or you can copy straight from the screen. And then there are some practice questions, which look a little bit like this. But you're also going to need some answers from yesterday's lessons. You're going to need the relative formula mass calcula calculations for slot 1A. Uh, the answers are here. So you have, if you can't find yesterday's answers, then I suggest that you copy just um, the formula mass numbers, the ones in the boxes. I'll copy those down, so that's A to E, and you're also going to need uh, these compounds as well, so F to I. Okay, I'm going to switch you to camera now. Okay, so we're going to calculate some percentage element of a compound. Um, we're going to need to start on this document, but a line paper is perfectly all right if you want to count on line paper. So the first question there, which isn't numbered, says uh, state the formula for calculating the percentage element of a compound. And we're going to write this down. So percentage element of a compound equals it's quite a long one, so I'm going to try and squeeze this in. So it is AR of the element times by number of atoms of that element divided by MR of the compound. Now, as it's a percentage, you're going to have to times all of that by 100 at the end. Now, a couple of things I'm going to point out. One thing in particular is uh, this symbol, which I'll attempt to highlight. Here we are, AR. So at the top, I'm going to put a little note for you. So you could do the same. So this is what AR is. AR equals relative atomic mass. AR means a relative atomic mass. And in brackets underneath, aka, which means also known as the mass number. I'll show you what I mean now. That's a fairly long equation, but it's, it's pretty simple operation. So when I show you what it looks like in practice, I'm sure it will become clear. So the work the examples, two work the examples underneath. Uh, I'll read them to you. It says calculate the percentage of magnesium in magnesium chloride. 
which is MgCl2. So I'm going to write percentage Mg in MgCl2. Really, I've summarized the question. It says calculate the percentage of magnesium in magnesium chloride, MgCl2. So I've just written percentage Mg in MgCl2. Now that equals uh, the mass of magnesium. So I'm just going to write magnesium times one. Now the reason I put times one is because in magnesium chloride, there is only one magnesium. No number is one. So the mass of magnesium times one divided by the mass of the compound. And the compound is MgCl2. Now all of that is going to be times 100. So I'm going to work that out now uh, just underneath. So that equals the mass number of magnesium, which is 24 times 1, because there's one magnesium, divided by the relative formula mass of magnesium chloride which is 95. So you're going to do 24 divided by 95. Oh, I forgot to do it, times 100, times 100. That equals 25%. Okay, so that's example number one. Let's have a look at example number two. So at example number two says, Calculate the percentage of oxygen in sulfuric acid. So I'm going to write percentage, O, oh, percentage oxygen, percentage of oxygen in H2SO4 equals uh, oxygen times 4, so the mass of oxygen times 4 because there's a 4 after the oxygen in H2SO4, divided by the mass of H2SO4 times 100. So that's going to equal the mass of oxygen is 16 times 4, divided by, again, you're going to have to use your calculator to work this out, of H2SO4, that comes to 98 times 100. That takes us down to 64 divided by 98 times 100. So that equals 65%. Okay. So there are two worked examples for you. And really, if you follow those worked examples, you have no problems with the practice questions. Now, if you have those printed off, you can use them as they are. However, if you've not printed them off, then you can complete them straight from the screen here. So either way, pause the video and you have a practice now of doing those uh, percentage elements of a compound. And the answers to those questions are here. So you can check your answers. If you've got anything wrong, then make some corrections or have a look where you've got things wrong. So the answers to questions A to E are here. And the answers to questions F to J are here. Now, if you did the slightly harder ones, which I'm sure lots of you did, then the answers are here. You'll notice I've put a little red box on the left-hand side there. And what I did is calculate the relative formula mass of those more compli complicated compounds first. And I just put them on the side. Uh, so check that you've got those right. And the last couple of questions are here. And you'll notice that very big compound iron sulfate, which is a mass of 400. I would imagine a few of you made mistakes there, but you've got to have a think about what's inside those brackets. I've just indicated here that that compound is actually made from two ion atoms, three sulfurs. 
and 12 oxygens. Remember, whatever's inside the brackets gets multiplied by the number outside the brackets. It's just possible you might have made a little mistake there, but at least you know where they are. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, I hope you worked hard. Hope you sort of enjoyed it. And I'll see you for tomorrow's lesson.